How's it going, everybody? This is Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. And I guess this is going to be my next LP, as I've probably pointed out by now in my Final Fantasy VI. Which, at this point in time, I'm not done with Final Fantasy VI, but I wanted to go ahead and get started on this and see what I could do. I was saying it might take me ten days to do this. Well, based on what I've done today so far, I think it might take more like three weeks. But it's all the same to you, I suppose. It's just me playing a game and talking over it. And I haven't played this game in about three or four years, so... I thought I'd give her a go, and this is the story following the first Legend of Zelda. After Ganon was destroyed, Impa told Link a sleeping spell was cast on Princess Zelda. She will wake only with the power of number three Triforce sealed in the palace in Hyrule. To break the seal, crystals must be placed in statues of six foil guard palaces. Link set out on his most adventuresome quest yet, 1987. So this game is 21 years old already. What a mind trip, because I was old enough to know what I was doing when I was playing it. I mean, not that, like, three-year-old... Uh-huh. Oh, that's right. Okay, we're starting here. Yeah. A little messed up there. So this is pretty much the layout. This is how you're going to be playing the majority of your action scenes. Side-scrolling, jumping, flipping out the sword, and giving them hell. This is the overworld map here. And if you stray off of the yellow path, that's when the monsters appear. But fortunately, if you go back to the yellow path when they touch you, you won't have to fight anything. On the other hand, if you're in the plains or the woods when they touch you, then you teleport into whatever landscape you were standing on, and you have to fight monsters in that landscape. And that's pretty much all there is to it. But as long as you stay on the yellow road, the monsters won't show up. The thing is, most of the game, you won't have a road to walk on, so... So count your blessings now while you still can. This is the town, and unlike the first Zelda, you can talk to people, or you can... Well, no, you can't really talk to them yet, no. Of course, even today, you can't do that, but... <laughs> like, you know, choose what to... Holy cow, there are some weird stuff happening on the screen right now. I tell ya. Must be the recording thing that I'm using. I don't know. Occasionally, you'll see someone walk out of their house, and if you see that, be sure to try and talk to that person, because it's probably something important. In this case, it's uh, your first spell. Because we also have magic spells now to add to Link's... I don't know, it's like I'm almost trying to do this from the point of view of somebody who's only played the first Zelda and hasn't played all the Majora's Mask and Twilight Princess and all those, and Ocarina of Time... Man, Ocarina of Time would be fun to do. Hmm. Fun to do, I should say. I'm letting my words slur together here. Up at the top of the screen, you'll see a little sword in the top left corner with a 1 next to it. That's your current attack power. That will go gradually up to 8 by the end of the game. If you take it that far, you can actually finish the game with less than 8, but I wouldn't recommend it. I'd recommend at least 6. The same with the magic and the life, they also have a rating which will be based on your experience. And now we don't have those numbers up there, so I'll have to wait till, uh, wait till a random battle shows up. Now sometimes you'll step on a piece of the map, and it'll automatically take you into one of these areas like this. Even if you didn't step on a monster, at well, that time we did, so we didn't get to see what was actually there. But there's actually something here, so... There are parts later in the game where you can skip areas like that by deliberately touching a monster just as you walk onto that square. And this is your experience. Once you gain enough experience to get one of your levels up, that screen will pop up and give you the option to trade in your experience to gain a level in that area, whether it's life, magic, attack. Pretty simple, really. It starts off really quickly. You'll gain a lot of levels. Notice I walked back onto the road there, so I wouldn't have to fight anything when the monsters inevitably touch me, which which is really impossible to avoid them. You almost have to touch them eventually. I don't like using that word touch, but no other word has really come to mind yet, so <laughs> maybe they run into you, run into them, there you go. You couldn't see where we were going in that cave, so later we will be able to see where we're going once we have the candle. There's so much to explain, so little time. If you also notice in the overworld, there was two different types of 
enemies coming at me. One of them was little slimy things, and the other one looks like Ganon. Well, if you get touched by the little slimy things, you'll go through an easy round, which what we just saw was an easy round. It didn't have the worms in it. But when I touched the Ganon creature, there were worms in the, in the area. And this is an example, in the, again, of one of those areas that you really can't avoid. You just walk onto it, and it takes you right in. This can be tricky, too, because you'll fall in the water, and it just kills you instantly. But back to what I was saying about those experience levels, and once again, we're trying to walk onto a piece of land that would have taken us somewhere, but the monster hit us at the same time as we walked onto it. So when we come back out of here, I'm going to walk off of that plot of land and then back onto it again to go into what's really there. And we have a heart container, how about that? That's one thing I had to pick up before I went to the palace. These guys can be a little tricky, but for the most part it's all about finishing them off before they finish you off. I have got an itch on my right cheek. Oh, that's better. It's just like Falcor, man. <clears throat> okay, back to what I was saying about the event. Notice now that my life number up at the top is two instead of one. That's because I gained that 50 experience earlier from a points bag that I picked up in the forest back there. And the 50 was enough to push my life up to the next level. But if you look in the top right corner, it's going to say a certain number slash 100. Well, that's how many points I need. Well, the left number is, of course, how many points I have, obviously, and the right number is how much I need to get to the next level. And when I get that much, my magic level will go up. Because the only thing that magic really does is makes your spells cheaper to cast. It costs less magic to cast, so... Oh, we got a locked door. I guess we can't go that way. So I have to go back to the left now. I love this music. Apparently I'm not the only one, because they used it in Super Smash Bros. Melee on the GameCube, so... Cool that. Cool that. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it's up to seven minutes already. What in the world have I been talking about all this time? When you destroy a monster, a little number will float up from where that monster was left. That's how much experience you gain from that monster. These skeletons are worth quite a bit. And you have to hit them down below like that, because they have a shield. Obviously, that thing gave me 30. These guys suck. They take away your experience if you hit them. These guys that come running at you that I keep running into. And sometimes they'll drop, like every fifth enemy will drop um, a magic container instead of give you experience. And so usually if you see one of those, it's a good idea to cast a spell and then pick up the magic container so that way you're not using any magic on it and you can actually get something from the container. I didn't do it that time because, well, because most spells, they give you a temporary effect that goes away once you zone out of the area, and you notice these areas are only like five or ten screens wide, so there's really very little to gain by it unless you're fighting a boss or something like that, then you might use it, but... Kablooey, and we're about to gain the magic level now, so there you go. Now once we get to 150, we'll get to increase our life again. I'm gonna skip this elevator here. These guys are leaving some trails, boy, let me tell you. The experience goes up pretty fast early in the game, but later on you'll start to get into thousands. You'll need, like, thousands of points to get the next level. But you'll also be fighting monsters that give you, like, 100 experience points for each one you kill. At the end of this hallway we got a fairy, but I'm running out of time here, so we'll have to see next time if I decide